Buying an Orange County chopper is probably the worst financial decision. Their custom-built motorcycles are quite unique and pretty amazing to look at, but actually riding these beasts may cost your life. Let's reveal why you should never ride an Orange County chopper. In a world obsessed with cool custom bikes, Orange County choppers are like the superhero of unique design and craftsmanship. These bikes are total rock stars in the biking community, with fans going crazy for them. But when you take a closer look, there are some, well, let's say a lot of reasons why you should never ride an Orange County chopper. You can say what you want about Paul Sr., but the fact is, he was smart. I mean, he was really smart. But it's important to know that Paul Sr. wasn't a motorcycle builder. He was more of an entertainer. It seemed that when they started the show, they were building bikes for people, but not for those who actually rode it. So what's the deal of making these Orange County choppers then? These guys were launching one Orange County chopper after another, but just for the publicity. With their custom-built bikes, they wanted to attract the attention of celebrities. And here is where it gets interesting. Business owners jumped on the hype, but why? Not for riding these beasts, because there are numerous reasons why you should never ride an Orange County chopper, which we will get into soon. But businesses wanted these bikers just as an advertising expense. They thought if they spent a couple of hundred thousand dollars on a chopper, they would get their name on the Discovery Channel for an episode. This was just a marketing strategy, a win-win for both parties. And although Orange County Chopper was making a bunch of money selling these motorcycles, the story behind the chopper bike is slightly different. When we look at the first reason why riding an Orange County Chopper can potentially cost your life is the functionality. While OCC bikes are stunning works of art, they lack practicality as everyday rides. The extreme designs and high handlebars might not offer the comfort or functionality needed for regular commuting or long rides. Do you want a comfortable seat and riding in a comfortable position? Well, forget about that with the Orange County Chopper. These bikers are more made for tall people who do yoga at least twice a week. Reaching the high handlebars feels like an intense gym workout. Inconvenience, the least to say. Just sitting on these bikes costs you a lot of effort and stretch exercises. It doesn't make any sense. Imagine riding this beast on the road. But that's just one thing. As their bikes are custom built, there could be a few solutions to it. But the next thing is more concerning. Of course, you want a lot of horsepower and noise coming out of these beasts. But when tested the choppers on the dyno, things went horribly wrong. The bike over pressurized the oil, which made the oil cap pop, leaking oil. And that is a big, big problem. It is always safety first, right? As you know, you need traction on your tires so you don't slide. When you slide out, you probably wreck. And if the oil plug pops, it's going to dump oil all over the ground, which means your tires are going to run over it, which means your tire is covered in oil. The result? You will no longer have traction, which means your rear tire is basically on ice, slipping from one side to another. If that happens on the highway or going anywhere at speed, you, well, crash in a split second. In fact, these bikes don't seem to be able to run for more than a few seconds at a time. Even if you wanted to, the question is, would you? It's obvious that these bikes are more than dangerous. It feels like there were too many hands in the fire. He went from one to another and no one really had any incentive to actually make these Orange County choppers ready for the open road. And that also drove Stephen Thompson nuts, the owner of Thompson Superchargers and SDS Cycles. Of course he saw the popularity of these choppers rise, but at what cost? He had built a business building quality motorcycles, building quality supercharger kits. He was all about quality above everything. Because of that, he offered to fix the many issues the choppers had, to make them ready for the road. In that way, these custom-built beasts would be safe to riders, and would be able to operate safely. The only thing they should do is push it around the shows, start up and hear the whistle and show how cool it is and show that it runs. Maybe at best someone who was stupid enough to hop on it, put it in gear and drive it into a trailer. But guess what? They had no interest whatsoever, it didn't matter to them. They got paid for building the choppers as they were, doing what they were doing. Or weren't doing, as I should say. But these choppers were never meant to go more than 15 miles per hour, at the most just for a quick show-off at a motorcycle event. But actually riding the road? Forget it. These bikes were even so bad that when Stephen Thompson put it on the dyno just doing some mild tuning and making sure it's running, the engine shifted over because the motor mounts were goofed up somehow. 
At the same time, the back hub started tweaking. There was always something going on with these choppers. Or they would have starters issues, throttle body issues, and more. It's clear that Orange County choppers aren't built for the open road. It's meant to be a work of art. It's like the Mona Lisa. She ain't very pretty to look at, but everybody loves to look at her. Right? But that doesn't mean that owning an Orange County chopper is a bad idea. I mean, we have got to admit that it is truly a work of art. It's not as expensive as the Mona Lisa, but every piece of art comes with a price. And knowing that these choppers are being sold between, let's say, $30,000 and even up to a few hundred thousand dollars, this is quite an investment. Especially for motorcycles that aren't built to hit the road. So it seems that it's more of a collector's item, a show-off. So owning one might sound cool, showing off your tough side, because let's be honest, owning and sitting on a chopper is quite the look. But when it comes to hitting the road on a chopper, especially an Orange County chopper, things can get tricky. Sure, these bikes look amazing with their long forks, stretched frames, and low-slung style. They're a dream in the showroom. But when you're out on the streets, their cool design can turn into a real challenge. Riding a chopper takes a special skill set, and they're not as stable as regular motorcycles. The open road might seem tempting, but riding a chopper needs more than just a sense of adventure. It demands serious skills and a keen awareness of the risks involved. The unique features that make these bikes stand out can make them a bit hard to handle, especially for new riders. So, while Orange County choppers are undoubtedly awesome to own and look at, hitting the road on one is a different story. Before you cruise down the highway on your dream chopper, think about the skills, responsibility, and potential dangers that come with these cool but challenging pieces of rolling art. Investing in an Orange County chopper is a significant decision that demands careful consideration. While the undeniable allure of these bikes is apparent, it is essential to weigh factors such as practicality, maintenance costs, and compatibility with personal preferences before committing to a purchase. Just like any substantial investment, it is crucial to understand the long-term implications, assess riding needs, and evaluate the day-to-day -day functionality of the motorcycle. It's important to bear in mind that the appeal of a striking design and the prestige associated with owning an Orange County chopper may be tempting, but it is imperative to ensure that it aligns with your riding style, comfort, and financial capacity. While some may find the thrill of owning such an iconic motorcycle outweighing practical considerations, others might prefer a more versatile and cost-effective option that better suits their needs. Striking a balance between passion and practicality is key. I wouldn't risk my life riding an Orange County chopper, would you? Let us know in the comments. Family feuds, court cases, and intense rivalry have all been a part of the life of Paul Tutul Jr., one of the most skilled motorcycle artisans in television history. For many years, his path has been characterized by these problems, capturing the attention of onlookers. One of the most suspenseful family dramas to ever air on television, the dramatic story between Paul Jr. and Sr. has electrified fans. That being said, there are sinister truths hidden behind the drapes that just must be exposed. Discover the secret narrative of Paul Tootle Jr. with us as we dive into rare admissions, whispered tales, and never-seen-before insights. Uncover the covert realities surrounding this American legend of the Orange County Chopper. Paul Tootle and his wife Paula Tootle celebrated the birth of their first child on October 2, 1972. The illustrious Paul Tootle Sr. himself served as the model for his name. This endearing child would go on to become one of the most recognizable characters in motorcycling culture something they had no idea about at the time. In the end, Paul Jr.'s life and profession were influenced by his childhood infatuation with his father's motorbike fixation. Paul Jr. was raised in the steel industry and learned the ins and outs of Orange County Ironworks from an early age, along with his siblings Michael, Kristen, and Daniel. Paul Jr. worked summers in the family company, developing his abilities and gaining a reputation as a quick student before the family was thrust into the tornado of Hollywood fame and money. Nonetheless, he was just a little child at the time, hoping to carry on his father's legacy. Paul was a great admirer of his father and would follow him wherever his passions took him. For all of high school, Paul stuck to his passion for ironworking, 
even in the face of the turmoil that would eventually define their lives on and off screen. In order to further his metalworking abilities, he took part in a cooperative education services program. Paul Jr. gained more and more value in the family business because of his special skill set. He had to give up conventional childhood experiences, too, because of his commitment to his trade. The majority of Paul Jr.'s summer vacation was spent in his father's store with adults, whilst other children delighted in traveling or participating in different activities. He therefore developed quickly. Paul Jr. threw himself entirely into the steel manufacturing industry after receiving his high school diploma. Having focused on perfecting his art, he did not pursue higher education. He moved on to work at Orange County Ironworks full-time instead. He gradually ascended the ladder to become the head of the railing shop as his position in the business became more apparent over time. All were going to change dramatically for the Tutu family, though, and many were taken aback. At this time, his father's interests turned to constructing motorbikes, which developed from a side project into a very lucrative company. Paul Jr. watched as his father's newfound enthusiasm developed into something more than simply a hobby, even if at first it appeared unattainable. The craft of customizing motorcycles also piqued his interest. And then something happened in 1999 that would change both the father and the son forever. Thanks to Paul Tootle Sr.'s introduction to the world of motorcycle adventure, Jr. was exposed to his son's extraordinary aptitude in metallurgy and construction. Orange County Choppers were founded as a result. Every empire, no matter how big or little, has its origins in a vision and grows to immense success. The aim of being a world-class custom motorcycle maker was originally pursued by Paul Tootle Sr. in 1999. Paul Sr. founded Orange County Chopper at 10 Factory Street in Montgomery, New York, as a spin-off from his wildly successful iron manufacturing company. Ultimately, the company relocated to Rock Tavern, New York's 27 Stone Castle Road. In just three years, Orange County Chopper became known as one of the largest custom bike makers in the United States. The world was first introduced to Paul Tootle Sr., an enigma who is a motorbike lover, engineer, and master craftsman, in December 2002, when the Discovery Channel took notice. For many Americans, the on-screen drama, the characters' larger-than-life personas, and the incredible bikes they created captured the attention of viewers. The show served as the catalyst for young viewers' discovery of a renewed passion for motorbikes and the open road. There was more to American Chopper than simply another reality TV program. Not content to be just actors reading lines from a screenplay, the team included Paul Tootle Sr., his son Paul Tootle Jr., Jason Pohl, Vincent DiMartino, Cody Connolly, Michael Tootle, and others. Their love for building two-wheeled wonders was an even greater passion than fame or wealth. After the show gained popularity, the bike store in Newburgh expanded from a small space to a new structure spanning 61,000 square feet and costing $12 million. The property was owned by the firm until 2011, when Paul Sr.'s major financer, GE Commercial Finance Business Corporation, forced him to give up ownership to prevent foreclosure due to serious financial troubles. To keep some control, they did, however, continue to lease two-thirds of the land. Despite Orange County Chopper's growing notoriety, Paul Tootle Jr. saw it as more than simply a company. Rather, it was his home. Thanks to his extraordinary creativity and intelligence, he drove the enterprise to new heights as its principal designer and fabricator. He performed several incredible designs that astounded the audience and his fellow artisans at the Orange County Chopper Shop. Apart from creating visually striking bicycles, Paul Tootle Jr. also enthralled viewers with his reality star demeanor on TV. He became a star due to his dominating appearance and capacity to make an impact on spectators. Even after leaving the program, he took use of his notoriety to build an incredible empire that endures to this day. But the most memorable scene on the show, which also happened to be the reason the entire series was canceled, was the violent fight between Paul Tootle Jr. and his father. This notorious combat may be familiar to you from the viral meme or the innumerable YouTube films that have analyzed its advantages and disadvantages, but it was more than simply a need for attention for these two people. Come along as we narrate the terrifying events of that terrible day that crushed Orange County Chopper's hopes. 
The argument between the junior and senior served as a clear reminder that conducting business with family may often be the most difficult undertaking. Nobody knows this better than Paul Tutul Jr. and his father, whose partnership in business finally caused their personal connection to fall apart. We learn about the tragic fate of Paul Tutul Jr. from Orange County Chopper as we explore the stories of American Chopper. Long after the violent altercation that signaled the end of the play, this crucial moment is still deeply ingrained in our memory. The father and son had a history of violent fights, many of which escalated to dangerous heights and put their personal and professional lives in danger before that fateful day. There were Paul Tutul Jr. and Sr. with their continual turmoil and arguing before Kim Kardashian lost her earring in the water and the Real Housewives became viral. Even though viewers had been used to seeing their on-screen arguments and occasionally even looked forward to them, the outrageous scene from the fifth season episode appeared to be the straw that broke the camel's back. Paul Tootle Jr.'s custom of arriving late to work on this fateful day set off a chain reaction of anger and wrath in his father. Paul Jr.'s spectacular arrival at quarter to eight simply fueled the already raging fire as the elder Tootle felt his son ought to be held to the same standards as other workers. Just as Paul Jr. walked into the business, his father's eyes, which were burning with rage, struggled valiantly not to lose his cool. Paul Sr. beckoned him into the office without further ado. He told them how angry he was over his son's constant tardiness. The discussion quickly turned into a furious dispute. Sr. threw his temper tantrum at Jr., telling him that he shouldn't have to watch his adult son. This was the pivotal moment when events began to drastically change. Junior likewise lost control of his emotions and failed to take his father's perspective into consideration. Without considering one another's sentiments, the two started yelling at one another and using the foulest language possible. It was clear that the mutual regard that the two had formerly enjoyed had evaporated. But things were about to take a drastic change when Paul Sr. revealed the conditions of the agreement. Emphasizing each and every occasion in which his son had broken them, Junior had finally had enough at that time. Reaching across the room, he grabbed a chair and flung it. The event ultimately resulted in Paul Junior's termination from both the garage and the program. The historic quarrel on the internet was preserved for all time by the memorable moment that inspired the development of the debate meme. The relationship between father and son broke down during the course of the following 10 years as the two men found themselves at odds with one another and with back and forth litigation. In the wake of Paul Jr.'s contract termination, Paul Sr. furthered his dissent by suing his own son, adding a new chapter to their well-publicized father-son conflict. Paul Tootle Sr. further distanced himself from his family by fighting with his son even after Paul Tootle Jr. left the program. As you can see, Junior had a 20% share in the company that he was reluctant to give up, so getting rid of him was not an easy task. Even though Paul Jr. had been dismissed, this wasn't a problem before since Senior wouldn't let him keep control of the company. As a result, while the entire world looked on, they marched into the courtroom, father and son squarely facing off in the battle of the century. Every party made their case as the court drama developed. Both parties exhibited their legal prowess before the Supreme Court of New York. Paul Sr., the one who started the argument, claimed that Orange County Choppers Holding, his firm, had the right to buy his son's shares and cut all connections. He also wrote Paul Jr. a letter indicating his desire to take Paul Jr.'s place in the firm by exercising a $500,000 stock option. Nonetheless, the complaint sought an extra $1 million in losses. At first, the arrangement appeared to be clandestine and meant to help Paul Jr. reduce his losses. At first, the court ruled in favor of Paul Sr., directing the son to sell his 20% share in the business. Nevertheless, Paul Jr., a young guy with a strong will, chose to appeal the case and would not give up. He contended that the offered choice was not binding. All four judges overseeing the appeal unanimously decided in favor of the son, notwithstanding the forceful argument presented by Paul Sr.'s attorneys. Everybody following the case was taken aback and stunned by this unexpected development. Paul Jr. won, but his relationship with his father suffered a great deal as a result. They were silent to one another for a whole 10 years. But as time passed, 
Paul Jr. moved on to new adventures and uncharted territory with Paul Jr. Designs, his next chapter. As they say, one door shuts and another opens, and Paul Tootle Jr. was one of those people. Paul was in a difficult situation, even though he was no longer working for his father's Orange County Customs after breaking off contact with him. There was a non-compete provision in his contract that prevented him from opening his own custom shop for a full year after he left the corporation. Paul Jr., however, started thinking about his future course of action once the year had gone. April 2010 saw the start of speculations that he was going to open up his own motorbike company to take on his father's firm head-on. Paul Jr. reportedly planned to hire a number of disgruntled former OCC workers, including Robert Collard, Vinnie DiMartino, Joe Pohl, Michael Tootle, all of whom had important positions at Orange County Customs, as per a story from the celebrity gossip website TMZ. A few of these suspicions were verified when Paul Jr. revealed his new business, Paul Jr. Designs, and hired former father of Paul Jr. employee Cody Connolly. But Paul Tootle Jr. eventually had an unwelcome guest return because of the additional problems that arose with this new firm. On August 12, 2010, the TLC Network debuted the spin-off program American Chopper Senior vs. Junior, which included this guest. The main emphasis of the presentation was the competition between Paul Tootle Sr.'s Orange County Choppers and Paul Jr.'s recently founded business, Paul Jr. Designs. The program ran for two years, from 2010 to 2012, with four seasons. In a game of intellect and expertise, the two teams were matched against each other, resulting in a clash that extended beyond professional rivalries and turned into personal animosity. Unfortunately, the senior members competing against the juniors did not fare well, leading to the cancellation of the show in 2012. As soon as the spin-off concluded, the divide between the father and son grew wider, and their communication became scarce. However, Paul Tootle Jr. was about to make a significant move that would uncover the true reality of the events that unfolded between him and his father, going beyond what was shown on screen. On November 7, 2017, Paul Tootle Jr. unveiled his first book titled The Build, Designing My Life of Choppers, Family, and Faith. This memoir served as a revelation, providing an all-encompassing account of the experiences and insights from the very source himself. For those who had followed the father and son's story closely, this marked a pivotal moment as they would finally obtain the inside scoop. Despite the father and son displaying many of their toxic traits on camera, the behind-the-scenes events appear to be even more disturbing. In an interview following the book's release, Paul Jr. disclosed that the original schedule for the book was set for the fall of 2016. However, due to unforeseen circumstances, things didn't go as planned. Nevertheless, Paul Jr. believed that the timing couldn't have been more perfect. The release coincided with the height of the feud between the two parties, attracting significant attention. With Paul's shop in shambles, the world was eager to hear his side of the story. In his book, Paul Jr. candidly revealed the harsh realities of being thrust into the limelight. He acknowledged that, aside from straining his relationship with his father, the experience had its positive aspects. However, he also highlighted the immense amount of work he had to undertake to prove the doubters wrong. From the very first page, Paul Jr. clarified any confusion about the authenticity of the fights, stating that they were indeed real. Throughout the initial chapters, he took the reader on a profound journey into his childhood and the challenges of growing up with a father he described as a monster. Apparently, Paul Sr. faced significant challenges due to his struggle with alcohol addiction which greatly strained his relationship with his family. Interestingly, this issue seems to have a generational aspect, as Paul Jr. disclosed that his father had grown up with an alcoholic mother and parents who spent more time arguing than showing affection. Understanding the difficult circumstances of Paul Sr.'s childhood, Paul Jr. eventually came to accept his father's explosive personality and even felt compassion towards him. According to Paul Jr., Writing about this revealing chapter was an emotionally intense experience, as it required him to confront a past he had tried hard to forget, akin to a terrible nightmare. This chapter of his life occasionally resurfaces, 
plunging him back into emotional turmoil, despite his belief that he had successfully moved on. To provide you with a glimpse of the deep-rooted nature of this story, here is a brief excerpt. It has been challenging to recount my negative experiences with my dad in this book because he is my dad, and I genuinely love him. I have always yearned for a normal relationship with him. However, amidst this storm, there is a glimmer of hope on the horizon. Paul Sr. bravely decided to seek assistance by checking himself into a treatment facility after seeing the damaging effects his addiction was having on his family. He was able to re-establish a steady contact with his kid by going through intense therapy. Working together on a modified shovel head in their basement, their mutual passion for motorbikes rekindled their friendship. This made it possible for them to make amends, have the required talks, and continue on their road to recovery. It's crucial to remember that this happened before their well-known on-screen conflict, which makes it challenging to determine the exact extent of their reconciled relationship. Beyond his father, Paul Jr. talks about his mother, Paulina, and the important role she had in his upbringing. He also talks about his siblings, Michael, Danny, and Kristen. The novel also makes clear Paul Jr.'s devout Christian religion and how it shapes his choices and course in life. He emphasizes that his faith is the cornerstone of all he has done over the years and credits his skill in bike manufacturing to God. In his captivating memoir, Paul Jr. takes the audience on an unforgettable journey. He delves into the intense drama that marked his time at Orange County Choppers. Initially, he harbored hopes of eventually taking over the company, but he soon realized that this dream would never materialize. This revelation was a deeply emotional moment in his story and the pain he felt was palpable in his writing. In Revelation, Paul Jr. candidly admits that it was only when he distanced himself from the business that he recognized the toxic nature of his relationship with his father, Paul Sr. Working with someone like Paul Sr. was emotionally draining, and when he was eventually fired, it felt more like a relief than a negative experience. The title of the book, The Build, goes beyond mere wordplay. It is a simple yet powerful representation of Paul Jr.'s journey, capturing the essence of his story. Additionally, Paul Jr. acknowledges his wife, Rachel Tootle, for her invaluable support during the writing process. Not only was she a pillar of strength for him, but she also meticulously fact-checked every detail to ensure the utmost accuracy in their shared stories. Paul had been waiting for this book for a considerable amount of time. His objective was to immerse the readers into his world, allowing them to comprehend his life story on a deeper level. As we explore the untold tales within these pages, we are transported to a realm where fiction surpasses reality. The book uncovers family conflicts that were previously concealed, revealing astonishing and even shocking revelations. Ultimately, it provides a comprehensive understanding of the enigmatic life of Paul Tootle Jr. As we explore the gripping stories of American Chopper, we find ourselves engrossed in the terrible story of Paul Tootle Jr. from American Orange County Chopper. Even though he was the son of a very successful man, his life was not at all perfect. In this moving picture, he is seen at his most vulnerable as he talks about the horrific events that affected both his own life and his complex relationship with his father. Their relationship has been a turbulent roller coaster, playing out in front of the world, from childhood traumas to on-screen fights and legal challenges. The world has been split by this compelling story. Some people have expressed their steadfast support for the father, while others identify with the boy. It is difficult to take a position on these issues, since both sides provide strong cases that support their positions. Who is to blame, in your perspective, for the clashes that have characterized their relationship? Who is it, the son or the father? Let us know in the comment. The heated rivalry, legal drama, and family feuds that characterized the relationship between Paul Tootle Sr. and his son were highlighted in the American Chopper special episode. But in August 2020, the two renowned artisans decided to put their disagreements aside and join forces for a single farewell episode. When word of the two-hour special episode broke, fans were excited since it represented the realization of a long-cherished ideal that many thought would never come true. The father-son team had been putting their fans through a rough ride for a full 10 years while they tried to patch up their broken relationship. 
They planned to work on a custom bike together in the garage, where it all started in the hopes of rekindling their love and healing their damaged relationship. Paul Tootle Jr. and Sr. learned that the original Orange County Choppers building was about to be demolished at the beginning of this intense episode. Even the hardest-bitten men started crying after learning this truth because it touched a nerve with them. Then, the father and son made the decision to go to the old building to talk about the past and gather some of the things that had been left behind. Paul Jr. was so moved by the history ingrained in the building that he took advantage of the opportunity to suggest they construct a bike together in the hopes that it would help mend their relationship. After giving it some thought, Paul Sr. agrees, and the two of them start working on making a custom chopper for ABC Supply Company, a well-known building product wholesaler. But problems start to arise between the father and son as they work together on their final project. As they try to add their own unique styles to the build, their different ways of being creative run into problems. When Paul Jr. insists on being more artistic, the whole project is put at risk, which brings back memories of arguments from the past. Thankfully, this time both sides can work out their differences. Even though they only have eight weeks to do it, the team gets to make a beauty. This is the right ending to one of the most famous TV shows and a great example of the bond between a father and son. Where can you find Paul Tootle Jr. now? He is the founder and CEO of Paul Jr. Designs, a company that makes handmade bikes and beautifully designed clothes all the time. The Faro bike, the Cadillac bike, the March of Dimes bike, and the New York Yankees bike are just a few of the well-known choppers that PJD has made. The skilled craftsman has also used his creativity to make bikes for movies and video games, and he has worked on many other projects on the side. As part of this, they are creating a dog park, a playground set, and a Coleman grill for the company's 10th anniversary. At the moment, the business works closely with Paul Sr.'s and has hired many of its previous workers. Paul Jr.'s friendship has stayed the same in his personal life. He married the woman he loved, Rachel Beaster, in 2010, and the two of them were on the hit TLC show Say Yes to the Dress. Their marriage has been wonderful, and in 2015 they were blessed with a son named Hudson. The couple's dream came true in 2020 when they bought a house on Long Beach Island. Paul Jr. has built up a net worth of about $2 million by running a successful business. He looks like he will have a bright future. The drama and feuds at Orange County Choppers kept people excited, and the interactions between Mikey Tutul, Rick Petko, Vinnie DiMartino, Paul Tootle Sr. and Paul Jr. made the show really thrive. Not only biker clubs were thrilled about the show, but all kind of motor enthusiasts. Now that it's almost 2024, let's check in with the group and all the shocking events that happened during the past few years, from lawsuits to rivalry and how friends became enemies. When American Chopper premiered in 2003, it was a huge hit, way bigger than anyone thought it would be. When the show first started, most people didn't know much about homemade motorbike building. But American Chopper changed that by showing that making a motorbike is more than just putting parts together. It's a creative, technical, and artistic process that works well together. The show had a huge impact, motivating a whole new generation of makers and fans with its complex designs, new methods, and unmatched artistry. This newfound excitement spread to custom chopper shops, and more people showed up to motorcycle events and gatherings. American Chopper had an effect on more than just the motorbike business. It had an effect on the design and automotive industries as a whole. The skills and imagination shown when making custom bikes were used in many other areas of design and craftsmanship. The story of the show attracted people all over the world and had an impact on skill and design. This show went deep into the complicated world of a family business, showing their hopes, problems, and disagreements with each other. This story of humanity goes deep into the age-old conflict between custom and new ideas, giving it a lot of emotional weight. With its deep stories and love of bikes, American Chopper became a cultural phenomenon that will never be forgotten in the world of motorbike culture. It spread far beyond the sound of engines and the shine of metal to become an important part of popular culture. The show showed the skill, commitment, and attention to detail that went into making each handmade chopper. People were really interested in the show because it mixed family drama with the complicated world of making motorcycles. 
It gave viewers an inside look at handmade choppers and the complicated workings of a family-run business. It also had interesting stories and amazing choppers. The name of the Toodle family became linked to American acting and craftsmanship. The show, however, was about more than just motorbikes. It also showed how the Toodle family interacted with each other and the bikes they made. As the cameras kept rolling, they caught both the good and bad times, especially the heated arguments between Paul Tootle Sr. and his kids, Paul Jr. and Mikey. These sad stories became the show's signature, and the bikes themselves were often overshadowed by them. However, it was this real, spontaneous display of raw feeling that set American Chopper apart from other reality shows at the time. One of the first reality TV shows, American Chopper, drew viewers in with the dramatic dynamics of a unique workplace. From 2003 to 2010, the show ran on the Discovery Channel for an amazing seven years. During its early seasons, fans got a close look into the world of Orange County Choppers. The head of the Tootle family, Paul Sr., took a hands-on approach. He expertly handled disagreements and let things happen naturally. But the show wasn't just about the Tootle family. It also had a cast of workers who quickly became fan faves. Now that the show is over, many people may be wondering where the group of American Chopper is now. As we look at what each person is doing now, let's start with Paul Tootle Sr., who runs Orange County Choppers and is its head. As soon as the American Chopper series ended, Paul Tootle Sr. set out to keep the show's spirit alive by running a shop with a new crew. But even for the experienced Tootle, this project had its share of problems. As the owner of Orange County Choppers, he was determined to keep his business going by putting together a new group of motorcycle fans who shared his unshakable desire to make amazing bikes. As a result, American Choppers came back to TV in 2018. In the middle of a lot of reboots, new shows with exciting new seasons were made under the title American Choppers. Unfortunately, this remake ran into legal problems that put Paul Tootle Sr. in the middle of lawsuits that started in 2017 and went on until the end of 2020. Paul did something very important when he said that Orange County Choppers would be moving from New York to the sunny state of Florida. The goal of this move was to look for new business possibilities in the motorcycle industry. Paul also had plans to start a new reality TV show called Orange County Choppers, made in America. But his plans to bring the church back to life ran into many problems, mostly financial ones. Unfortunately, Paul Sr. did not have enough money to make the new show happen. Even with this failure, Paul was able to get Thomas Derbyshire to invest in the idea in the end. Sadly, things went in a direction that no one saw coming. Paul did not use the allowed funds for the show as planned. Instead, he used them for personal things like fishing trips. Because of this, the creation of the show was held up, which made Derbyshire more and more angry. Therefore, Derbyshire went to court against Paul Sr. in April 2017. The court fight was mostly about claims of theft that Paul committed by misusing the invested funds. When Paul Sr. tried to change the agreed-upon ownership terms, looking for an equal 50-50 split instead of the original plans, things got even worse between the two partners. Tutul lost the lawsuit in the end, and the new show never got past the planning stage. In order to get some extra money, Paul Sr. decided to sell his expensive home in New York. The house was first put on the market for $2.9 million. The price seemed fair for the 39-acre property in Montgomery, New York State. But because Paul had to sell quickly, he slowly lowered the price. When it was put on the market in 2019, it was asking $1.6 million. At the moment, Paul Sr. is working with Keith Overton, who runs a business in travel and loves motorcycles. They are starting a business together to bring the Orange County Chopper's name back to life and make it bigger. Even though the famous brand has had problems and failures, this relationship could help them find a new way forward. Paul Tootle Jr.'s journey as a metal craftsman started when he was only 12 years old. Throughout the years, he has always been very good at shaping metal. Jr. was fired by his own father when he left Orange County Ironworks, even though he owned a 20% stake in the company that he and his father co-founded in 1999. Not giving up, he opened his own store in New York, putting himself in direct competition with his dad's business. Over time, his goals got even bigger, which let him show off his artistic skills without any family restrictions. This greater freedom to be artistic 
got him a lot of attention and made it easier for him to use his designs on clothing and in his personal branding. As proof of his successful job, he has worked with some of the biggest names in the business, like Blizzard Entertainment. Paul Jr.'s journey is marked by how well he can lead a group of workers, showing how dedicated and hardworking he is. We should note that his projected net worth is now a solid $2 million, which is more than his father's. It's clear that saying Paul Jr. is successful in the Tootle family is an underestimate, especially when you look at Paul Sr.'s money problems. As his work continues to grow, he has even started to write about history. This gives motorcycle fans a unique chance to go back in time and see the motorcycles that they have seen on the show come together over the years. While other members of the Tootle family have been successful in their own right, this gives fans both a history lesson and a real link to the famous bikes featured on the show Mikey Tootle. Mikey, the younger boy, doesn't seem to have had the same luck, though. It was very important for Mikey Tootle to keep the peace in the family and on the show. In the beginning, his job at Orange County Choppers included basic chores like cleaning and answering the phone. During this time, he worked with Vinny to make the Mikey Vinny bike. Fans liked Mikey because he was friendly and warm, and he often served as a go-between for senior and junior. Mikey did decide to leave the show in 2012, though, so he could find peace in his own life and fix things with his father. Mikey is good at more than just working in the workshop. He is also an artist in his own way. He wanted to take a new road, so he went into the art world and opened an art gallery. He was able to explore his artistic side and show off his art, including some panorama pieces, through this new business. It's too bad that the show had to shut down in 2014. Mikey didn't give up on his art, and in 2016, he started a web series called Wandering. With the help of another cast member, Jason Pohl, this show was made to bring attention to the problem of homelessness in New York City. But this effort didn't work out. Instead, it got the Tootle family into more legal problems. In 2019, the Gunnell family sued Mikey, saying that his company had used Scott Gunnell's work without permission and not paid the right amount of fees. As a result, the court agreed with Scott Gunnell and gave him more than $200,000 in damages. In addition to being in trouble with the law, Mikey also had a problem with alcoholism. His relationship with his father got worse because of this fight, and he was fired from all of his jobs in the Tootle family business. Mikey, on the other hand, took action to deal with his problem by going to rehab and eventually making peace with his family. After that, he went back to work as an assistant general manager at Orange County Choppers. Later, he got into the food business by starting Far Q LLC, a company that mostly made pasta sauces. Even though Mikey has had court problems in the past few years, he seems to be doing well financially. Vincent DiMartino, who goes by the name Vinny, joined Orange County Choppers through a high school link he had with Junior. Junior and Vinny sometimes had problems on the show, but Vinny's appearance was key to its draw, making him an important cast member. Vinny joined Orange County Choppers in 2002, but he quit the group in 2007 to focus on personal growth. Vinny chose to go out on his own and set up five force customs, but his new business had some problems at first, especially because of the 2008 financial crisis which shook the economy and made fewer people want to buy motorcycles. Also, people were less interested in making unique changes. Because of these problems, Vinny had to rethink his business plan in order to make sure he would have a more stable income. He expanded his list of services by adding regular car repair. He ran five force customs for five years before switching to DiMartino Motorsports. In the first few years of the TV show, Vincent DiMartino became well-known for his excellent skills and strong work ethic in the Tootle family's business. But Vinny chose to leave Orange County Choppers in 2007. Talks of problems within the team may have played a part in his decision. After he left, Vinny went into business with his co-star Cody Connolly and opened a successful custom motorcycle shop called Five Force Customs. This business, however, only lasted five years. But after the end of American Chopper, Vinny's tastes changed. He switched his attention from machines with two wheels to machines with four wheels. He decided to sell all of his motorcycle gear in 2013 and used the money to open DiMartino Motorsports in Walden, New York. Amazingly, Vinny's life after Orange County Choppers went well, showing that he could do well without Paul Sr.'s rules. During his time working there, 
He has even talked about feeling like he couldn't move up. Rick Petko, a skilled blacksmith and metal worker, is another well-known person who worked for the company. His long history of building and making bikes made him very well known. In 2000, Rick met Paul Sr. at Daytona Bike Week. Their paths finally crossed again in 2002, when Rick moved to New York. He got a job with OCC and worked as a bicycle repairman at first, and then as a Southeastern dealer. Rick became well-known on the show and became a well-known part of the Orange County Chopper family. After a hard day's work, he had to drive 90 minutes every day to be with his family, even though he loved them very much. But Rick quickly saw that he needed a change and got a job as the headmaker at Pocono Mountain Harley-Davidson in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. In this job, he focused on custom manufacturing and used his skills to help customers make their bikes more unique. Rick has worked in many different fields that have to do with furnaces and metal bending over the course of his long career. In his spare time, he followed his love for working with metal by making knives by hand through his business, RPD and company. His kitchen knives became very famous because of how well they were made. The best thing about Rick's job is that he can run his business from home, which lets him spend more time with his family. Cody Connolly got his start in the world of Orange County Choppers and the famous TV show American Chopper when he was very young. He clearly really loved the art of making motorcycles, which became clear very quickly. As a young trainee, Cody quickly learned all the little details of building motorcycles. Putting together customized bikes was a very amazing skill of his. He paid close attention to every detail of every job he worked on and was always trying to get things just right. He was also very passionate about what he did. His time at Orange County Choppers is marked by growth and change. Cody went from being a beginner mechanic to a professional one, and he had a big effect on many famous builds in reality TV, where dramatic fights and interesting stories usually get all the attention. Cody quit American Chopper in a pretty quiet way, leaving fans wondering why he left. He was no longer in the spotlight on TV, but his love for bikes didn't change. He joined forces with Vinny DiMartino to form Five Force Customs. They are a team based on mutual respect and a love of making motorcycles. This partnership worked out well, and Five Force Customs quickly became known in the world of handmade bikes. Cody's accuracy and dedication were clear in every motorcycle their shop made, drawing on their combined knowledge and past. Cody's journey, though, went beyond his time with Five Force. He tried his hand at different parts of the car and motorcycle businesses and worked with other craftsmen who were involved in custom motorcycle events. Even though Cody stayed away from mainstream reality TV, he kept working on his trade and making important additions to it. So, his name in the business rose, and he became known for his excellent craftsmanship, which made him more famous than his connection to the popular TV show. Cody's efforts have definitely had a lasting effect on the world of custom motorcycle making showing how much care and attention to detail goes into each one. Cody got his start on American Chopper, but the show had an impact on a lot of different areas, not just motorcycle building. Cody wasn't the only cast member whose story touched people around the world. His was just one part of the show's impact. The member pick for today is now up. This is the story of how Paul Tootle Sr. was found guilty, which shocked people all over the world. In court, everyone watched Paul Tootle Sr., who is known for making cool motorcycles, stand there in an orange jumpsuit. It was amazing how he had gone from being a well-known person to where he was now. The chain of events started when he got caught up in an exciting chase on one of his homemade motorcycles. Later, when the police finally caught him, they found that his participation went far beyond what anyone had thought. The prosecution said he had committed a major theft during the trial, but there were signs that he may have found something even more important. People were confused by how strange the situation was. Did he really do something wrong? Or was he just in the wrong place at the wrong time? Everyone was in the dark when the judge slammed the gavel and Tutul was led away. The hearing happened behind closed doors, so no one knew the truth. This led to a lot of gossip and talk. What did the whole story say? Might he have accidentally revealed highly secret government information that had to be kept from the public? The answers are just around the corner. Remember to use the word hash subscriber pick when you share your thoughts in the comments. Let's move on to the next part now. Jason Pohl. Jason, the respected creator of the program, became known for his unique style 
and his disagreements with Paul Sr. from time to time. Paul's work as a designer took off after he got ideas from his time at Orange County Chopper. Jason was creative in areas other than bikes, as he worked on different design projects. His unique method mixed new ideas with real-world applications, making him a very sought-after figure in the field. In his personal life, Jason enjoyed being a dad and posted sweet pictures of his kids on social media. As an industrial designer, he kept a smaller image online after the show ended, but he moved beyond designing motorcycles and into the wider field of industrial design. From 2012 to 2013, Jason kept showing up on reality shows like American Chopper, Senior vs. Junior and Orange County Choppers. But there was a serious incident on an episode of American Chopper Senior vs. Junior where Paul did not handle some feedback from Paul Senior well. Things got worse very quickly, and the designer lost it and threw a motorcycle off a lift in anger. Paul is a brand spokesman for SolidWorks right now. In this job, he talks about his experiences with the company's tools and looks into what else can be done with them. He also has his own business called Jason Pohl Designs, where he works on projects like making a CNC machine, which is an important part of the production process. Jason splits his time between his family, which includes his wife and kids, when he's not at work. Before he joined Orange County Choppers, Jason's life took a strange turn. He didn't want to start designing special motorcycles right away because he had other goals. Before that, Jason was in the Marine Corps, which taught him focus and morals that would later show up in his work. He didn't jump right into the world of choppers, though. Instead, he went to the Illinois Art Institute to get a bachelor's degree in fine arts and improve his artistic skills. Jason set out on an amazing trip in 2004 that led him to the Orange County Choppers. He quickly showed that he was an important part of the team there. Even though Jason didn't get as much screen time as some of his co-workers, his hard work and great design skills were noticed. He actually accumulated a net worth of more than $500,000. This was possible because of the great things he did. It was Jason's calm and focused approach to his work that made him so popular. He took on challenges without complaining and kept his cool, even when he had a lot of important duties to do. Even though Jason had planned to stay in the U.S. Marine Corps at first, fate had other ideas. Custom motorcycle construction is what he did because of his unique skills and unwavering commitment. Even though he isn't very well known, the American Chopper reunion features were a surprise because they brought back both Paul Sr. and Paul Jr. to TV about 10 years after the show had ended. They were the subject of a two-hour special on Discovery Go, in which they took on the difficult task of making a helicopter for ABC Supply Company, a well-known American roofing and siding business. In this show, which aired on February 24, 2020, they had just eight weeks to finish the last helicopter for the old Orange County Customs business. Even though father and son had a tense relationship and had fought in the past, they had to put those problems aside and work together again on this project. At first, Paul Sr. insisted on having creative power over the whole process of building the helicopter, and he didn't seem to care about what Paul Jr. might have to offer. Even though there were problems and unknowns, Paul Jr. saw this as a chance to fix their relationship, even if things didn't go exactly as planned. Because the show was such a huge hit, it was only a matter of time before networks looked for ways to continue the story or capture its spirit in new ways. Fans went to great lengths to see the reunion shows because they wanted to see what had happened with the Tootle family since the first show. These shows not only took viewers down memory lane, but they also showed how the family changed over time and how the world of custom motorcycle building is always changing. The world of American Chopper also grew with the help of spin-offs and related shows that tried to capture the magic of the original while giving viewers new views. Some of these shows went into great detail about the technical side of building bikes, which helped fans get a better sense of the craft. Others showed how cast members' personal lives changed when they weren't on Orange County Chopper's workshop. They talked about their work with other reality shows, guest visits, and crosses, but they weren't as famous as American Chopper. Even though American Chopper cemented its place in pop culture, it's also important to keep up with members of the supporting cast. The show had a lot of different personalities, and each one brought something different to it. Even though the tell was often the center of attention, the supporting cast had a big impact on the story and characters of the show. 
Let us take a moment to get to know the supporting cast of American Chopper again and look at the paths they have taken since leaving the show. Jim Pratt. After Jason Pohl left as narrator for American Chopper in 2007, Jim Pratt took over the job. During this time, Pratt also did voice work for other TV shows, like Airplane Repo, Out of the Wild, and The Alaska Experiment for the first two seasons. Some famous people stay active on social media even after they're no longer in the spotlight. Jim Pratt, on the other hand, seems to have chosen a more private road because he isn't very busy there. But IMDb says that his most recent TV job was as a radio host on the network show Bob Hart's Abishola, which starred Billy Gardell and Folek Olawofoyeku and aired in 2019. Many people don't know what Jim Pratt did after American Chopper, and it may be hard to find out more about his work after narration, because he lives a private life and isn't online much. However, since he is still working in television, it is safe to say that he is happy with what he is doing now. Ron Salisbury This person is the one who told the Orange County Chopper team about his special set of skills. Because he knew a lot about electrical systems, he made sure that every chopper was not only a work of art, but also worked perfectly. Ron Salisbury, a well-known character in the American Chopper series, broadened his interests by getting into the electronics of cars. His exceptional skills have made him very popular in the field, and he has been asked to work on many unique projects. In addition to having a great job, Ron loves to travel and has taken trips all over the world. He takes pictures of his travels and posts them on social media to share with his fans and following. Mike Rowe Mike Rowe has made a great career that goes far beyond television. He is known for as the host of Dirty Jobs and as the voice of American Chopper. Rowe has managed to make a name for himself in the show business since leaving American Chopper in 2010. He has been the host of many other famous shows, including Deadliest Catch, Ghost Hunters, and Returning the Favor, which show amazing people who are doing good things in their towns. Rowe also spent a lot of time pushing and fighting for trade jobs, supporting skilled work, and stressing how important it is to work hard. Along with his work on TV, Rowe has also started his own business, he has a line of whiskey called Profoundly Disconnected, and a line of clothes and items that were inspired by his love of skilled work. He has won awards for his work and support, including the prestigious Eagle Scout Award from the Boy Scouts of America. Mike Rowe, who lives in San Francisco now, is still involved in a number of projects. He has had a big impact on both the entertainment business and the larger conversation about the value of skilled trades. The story behind the story his most recent TV show, is based on his podcast with the same name. It gives viewers a unique look at stories and the entertainment industry. As the wheels of time continue to spin, the legacy of the American Chopper crew lives on. From the adrenaline-fueled days of building custom bikes to the present, where each member has charted their unique course, their impact remains indelible in the world of custom motorcycle fabrication. Despite the show coming to an end, the journey for these iconic cast members persists. While some have ventured into new business endeavors, others have embraced personal passions, and a few have continued to delve deeper into the realm of motorcycles. Whether it's Paul Tootle Sr.'s unwavering dedication to craftsmanship, Paul Tootle Jr.'s entrepreneurial spirit in running his own shop, Mikey Tootle's artistic pursuits, or the pursuits of the other key figures of the show, their stories continue to evolve inspiring fans and enthusiasts worldwide. The roads they travel may diverge, but the legacy of American Chopper endures, leaving an indelible mark on the fabric of custom motorcycle culture. As fans, we remain ever curious about their endeavors, eagerly anticipating the next chapter in the lives of these legendary builders. While the show might have parked its bikes, the spirit of innovation, creativity, and passion ignited by the American Chopper crew lives on, resonating with enthusiasts who continue to seek their own thrilling rides along the highways of life. Building custom choppers with tight deadlines, while being constantly followed by camera crews documenting every move and mistake, and striving to run a successful business, it's safe to say that the combination of these factors didn't exactly work out well. Many of us watched American Chopper solely for the explosive arguments, and most of us doubted whether a father and son could genuinely fight like that and still maintain a working relationship. However, prepare to be astonished as the truth is revealed at the conclusion of this video. 
Now let's delve into these intense conflicts. I'll bash your friggin' skull and stop, stop. Give me uh, the... Here, you wanna play? No, no, I don't wanna play. <laughs> In this episode, Paul Sr. and Jr. are having a meeting in their office. One of the Tootle brothers, Mikey, however, chooses to show off his musical skills by playing his electric guitar at full blast. At first, Jr. doesn't like being interrupted and tries to keep a serious attitude by removing the guitar. Even so, Mikey, who is known for being silly, quickly plugs it back in and starts strumming the guitar, making the most annoying sounds you can think of. This action starts a fight, so Paul Sr. and Jr. make things worse by throwing an electric guitar through the office window, breaking the glass into pieces. Lucky for us, Paul Sr., being the oldest, takes safety steps by wearing a motorbike helmet to protect his beloved biker hair. Rick, on the other hand, is not ready for the flying glass, so he becomes a target and is unfortunately hit. Thanks to some lucky luck, everyone gets away with only minor injuries, though Rick's wasn't too happy. Right here. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. That's Mike, go out right the front. There. Some uh, people from Brazil want to see you. Go out there. Stay out there for a couple hours. Keep the fans company. Yeah. Yeah. Do something, jackass. Yeah, you. <laughs> you mother. At the shop, Paul Senior and Paul Junior joke around with Mikey and make fun of the fact that someone from Brazil says they want to meet him. They say that these people are waiting for him outside. Mikey, on the other hand, often takes these jokes personally and makes fun of them back. It looks like Mikey has finally had enough of their jokes, which caused a freakout. The three men feel bad about their joke and know they went too far. Steve steps in and suggests that they say sorry to Mikey. This event taught us an important lesson about how to tell when a joke is too far. You gotta, I, I wanna do, I wanna do a little more on this bike, so design something here. What a loser. What'd you do on this bike? What are you talking about? Just what I said. Man, did Don't we equally on work bike. on this bike? Yeah, you, listen. Wait a minute. Did uh, we listen. equally work on this bike? Every time I come out here, Vinny's doing a job and you're holding his hand. Me what and him split do? everything. We started yesterday. Now get your hands dirty for a change. Do some welding and grinding instead of watching everybody else do it. You, you got an awfully nice house for what I did. You got an awfully nice house for what I did. The fight started out of the blue when Mikey tried to have a quiet conversation with his dad about his plans to do things other than work at the shop. Senior, on the other hand, wanted to teach Mikey about all the job opportunities he had. But it was clear that Senior hadn't done anything real to pursue these chances. We already knew this because he tends to lose focus when he starts talking. Because of this, the meeting ended without making any real progress toward a solution. Film with your second pipe. I haven't figured it out yet. Will you leave me alone? Are you, I don't know. What more I think do you, you want? No. Let's get it done. Get I know it long it takes to do an exhaust. You and it's not you really that don't. elaborate you that don't. it can't be done. I will. No, get it. Won't. Listen, I want the thing done Listen. today. Not only do I know how to use one, I know how to make them, Jocko. As emotions rose to finish this one-of-a-kind bike build for Will Smith on time, Paul Sr. and Paul Jr. got into a heated fight to get the bike finished faster. While Jr. and Vinny worked on the exhaust, Sr. asked Jr. what his second pipe was for. Jr. replied that he hadn't decided what to do with it yet, and asked Sr. to leave him alone. After this argument, we all saw what happened as a result. Jr. even said he would break the bike if it wasn't finished by the end of the day at one point. This event shows how different people in the Tootle family have different points of view and how disagreements happen. I make the decisions around you, okay? But can't we work I'm together on these things? Be here. Okay, so you just made the decision that we weren't gonna do that with the wheel. He loves the drama. Listen, so just do what you're supposed to do and there would be no drama. Guy Why do you need me here? Why, Why do you need me here? I don't. See ya. Take I'm a right. I won't leave because I own part of this company. I don't have to leave. Do you know what you do here to this company? You could literally drive this company underground by your actions. You have to, to, you have to respect me as well. I don't respect the person. You should respect the same thing over and over. There had to be a clear reason for this fight or something very wrong for these two people to be so angry at each other, right? Wrong, like many of these fights, it seemed to just happen out of the blue. In this case, the shop was supposed to have some wheels laced, but the person was late 
and Junior and Senior couldn't agree on how the wheels were going to be done. Out of the blue, Senior says, I don't give a about you neither. This was by far one of the nastiest fights we saw on the show. Do me a favor. Come in now, right? Come in my office. What's going on? Everybody's in here at 7 o'clock, and you come walking in at quarter to 8. When the is it going to stop? Who the are you? I don't get it. Day last week, I gave you a list that's in your contract that you need to abide by. What the well, I don't know what you want from me. This we're the we're the part in this thing. We're not involved here. Let me tell you something. If I wasn't involved, this go to You know what? Get the out of here. And don't bother coming in tomorrow because you're permanent. Just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, we witnessed how furious Senior became when Junior arrived late to work or took excessively long lunch breaks. It was evident that Senior had reached his breaking point, as tensions were high and there was a clear lack of respect between the two. This ultimately led to the unfortunate outcome of Junior no longer working for his father. It's sad to see that while these fights may have appeared fake or scripted, they were actually genuine. Court documents and testimonies from shop employees and show producers confirm their authenticity. The important lesson to take away from this show is to never mix family and business, as it almost always ends badly. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button just like Junior smashed that window and click the notification bell to stay updated. Dang. You know what? Get the f out of here. And don't f bother coming in tomorrow because you're f permanent.